So it's that time again, folks. The election is fast approaching the United States. And because people are distrusting the Democratic Party, it's time to bring back Russia again. Yeah, let's fabricate some conspiracies. Yes, once again, folks, the debunked Russia gay theory that we knew was false from the start is coming back for a reboot. This time, because now Kamala Harris is the front runner and they can't have another 2016. So MSNBC is preemptively making you fearful that Russia might strike again. And it says breaking Biden administration to hit Russia with sanctions for trying to manipulate U S opinion ahead of the election. I would like to correct that headline and say the Biden administration is trying to manipulate U S opinion ahead of the election. And this is how they're doing it in the mainstream media. Listen to this. Breaking news, the Biden administration taking a series of actions to target what they allege are attempts by Russian backed actors to manipulate public opinion here in the U.S. ahead of the presidential election, according to two senior U.S. officials. Joining us now is NBC's Ken Delanian. Ken, what more have we learned? Jose, this is now before we get to this guy's response, I need to point out to you that this guy is a deep, deep, deep insider in the cia tank this guy is the one that cultivates these random conspiracies the these are the people that are unelectable unaccountable and cultivize themselves in these deranged lunatic scenarios to try to undermine public opinion these are the propagandists at large and they come on to mainstream media to purposely lie to you This guy is a manipulator. This guy, you shouldn't trust him with an ounce of your life. I wouldn't even trust this guy if he gave me directions to the nearest rest stop. That's how much of a heinous prick this guy is. This guy got fired once for how much he's lied. This is being described by our sources as a whole of government action designed to target Russian propaganda and disinformation aimed at interfering in the 2024 election. It is said to include sanctions by the Treasury Department, law enforcement action by the Justice Department, and one of the... And like I've stated in the past when covering all this Russia gay hoopla and everything in between this whole conspiracy, is that if they really gave a damn, if they really gave a damn about interference in democracy, if they really give a damn about disinformation, if they really gave a damn about foreign meddling, where are the reports of Israel's manipulation in the electoral process in America? Because that is confirmed. That's not that's not a conspiracy. That is confirmed. That is blatantly confirmed in factual documents that prove that Israel purposely buys up politicians to advance their warfare to advance their democracy, to advance their their reign in the Middle East. We know that. We know about the APAC lobby. We know about their highly influenced uh, credentials that took, an, uh, that took an America by storm. We know about that. We know about Saudi Arabia. What about the WEF? What about the WHO? What about those international organizations? Okay, if we want to talk about foreign meddling, we should be considering global initiatives that don't really have a precise location. We don't know where they came from. We don't know the money is being sourced, but somehow it's being funneled to countries like the United States and Canada to undermine our democracy and our public awareness. If we gave a damn, if we gave a damn focuses on RT, formerly known as Russia Today, that network of Russian government funded English language websites and television platforms that was flagged all the way. So again, they they're right to go into RT now, by the way, RT, when rush, when, when they were starting to prop up the Ukraine war, Russia was banned off of Canadian platforms, off YouTube, off of American platforms. You were only allowed to see it on rumble. You're only allowed to see if you had a VPN. And even then they were trying to track down people using a VPN to watch their coverage. Also. Russia Today, RT, 
has an American bureau. Used to have an American bureau before they got kicked out of the country. Um, RT America had on American hosts. You know who was on that network? Larry King. Larry King had an interview series on RT. Is he a Russian asset? You know who also is on RT? Jesse Ventura. Is he a Russian asset? You know who's also on that network? Lee Camp. Is he a Russian asset? How about uh, Rick Sanchez, who had the news program every night? Is he a Russian asset? How about Chris Hedges? Chris Hedges had an interview series. Is he considered a Russian asset? Uh, Pulitzer Prize winning uh, journalist for the New York Times. Is he a Russian asset? Um, let's see. Who else Who, who else can we say is also on our t- William Shatner. William Shatner had a, had a short-lived series on RT. Are you, is, 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 is William Shatner, the great Captain Kirk, a Russian asset? That, that, that's, 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 that's so stupid. It's so stupid how they twist themselves to come up with these dumb, ridiculous conspiracies. And I could throw their logic back in their face. Okay, so if we're going to assume that anyone that works at RT is a Russian asset... So anyone that's a correspondent for the BBC, I guess they're uh, English spies. They're part of the MI6. How about anyone that works for Al Jazeera? Are they? Are they? Are, I guess they're part of Qatar. They're they're those spies, Qatar spies. How about how about how about how about, uh, how about Chinese networks? How about Canadian networks? How about American correspondents that go overseas? Should we should we charge them for being American spies when they cover you know? war regimes in other territories? Like, how goddamn stupid can you be to suck this in? How goddamn stupid and 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 just absolutely full full head in the sand to believe this garbage for a second. But people will do this because, again, they're so fixated on their hatred for Trump, their hatred of the others, their, their, their hatred for people not forming to their line, that they'll believe any garbage. All the way back in 2017 by the U.S. intelligence community as a vehicle for Russian disinformation and election interference. And at that time, the Justice Department required RT to register as a foreign agent. Uh, It remains to be seen exactly what actions the U.S. will take against RT today. But this does appear to represent an escalation in the efforts to try to purge the system of Russian propaganda and disinformation. What's interesting. So again, where's the investigations on when BBC comes down to ask the president questions? Where, where's, where's the, where's the investigations when say the CBC here in Canada gets offered to go to the white house press briefing. Where, where's those credentials? Why are we investigating them? How about, how about how about any of the other outlets outside of the United States? How about the advertisers, the international advertisers that formulate um, on American networks? Are they not hold to scrutiny? Should we not criticize them? Are we not holding them accountable? We're talking about foreign influence. Let's talk about foreign influence. Interesting is that, look, the U.S. has been saying all along that not only Russia, but Iran and China, but particularly Russia, has been consistent. Oh, isn't that interesting? They're, they're in collusion with Russia, Iran, and China. All three places we want to invade. What a dink! What a funny coincidence that would be to bring that up in, on MSNBC, talking about influence and democracy. Ha! I wonder if it's all connected somehow. Let me go. Let me go to my chalkboard and draw this out. <laughs> oh. it's just amazing that people. There's going to be people that believe this. I still have, I have people here in Canada, you know, friends of mine that are even bought into this. I'm like, you got to be kidding me. You've got to be kidding me. <laughs> Trust me. If, if Russia wanted to do something, they would have done it already. The most, inf- the pi- biggest influence we have in control of governments and control of democracy are people like the WEF, the WHO, Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos, 
those satanic billionaires and Israel. Israel, the Mossad, the CIA. Those are your biggest influencers. Those are the biggest people we should be criticizing and having investigations on the daily. Including the fact that you have a CIA, CIA tool right now lying right to your face. Constantly trying to manipulate American public opinion with uh, disinformation on social media platforms, use of fake accounts, um, and, and through RT, through its state-sponsored platforms, um, as they did in 2016. The diff- Again, we're not going to investigate the Israel fake accounts that we know about. You're not going to do an investigation on that. You're not going to expose the lies that uh, government organizations that randomly appear to fight disinformation of Russia were actually exposed as creating that disinformation themselves. Remember that? Remember they came up with that whole, you know, uh, that disinformation board that they're going to track down. There's this private company that the government was paying them to crack down on these Russian spies. And it turns out those fake accounts and Russian spies came from them. They created their own business. They suckered you into it. And what happened to them? They just got a slap on the wrist. They got a slap on the wrist for manipulating everybody in the government, for manipulating the entire country to think that Russian spies were coming after you. Even though the Russian spies, those fake accounts, were created by those people. (laughs) Created by those people that were supposed to be fighting them. Unbelievable. So... It's got even it's got even worse, folks, because they're getting really harsh into the social media sphere uh, because that's where people are getting their information. They're getting their information uh, from YouTube and Google and, and, and platforms from podcasters and YouTubers because they're sick and tired of the mainstream media lying to them and they they're taking action. So breaking the U.S. Department of Justice alleges that tenant media which has Benny Johnson, Tim Poole, and Dave Rubin on its ro- uh, roster, received $10 million from the Russian government to publish content as part of a Russian influence operation. Tenant is owned and controlled by Lauren Chen, who is affiliated with Turning Point USA and her husband, Leon Donovan. Here's also the CBC jumping on board to the Russia Gate hoax, because just like they did in 2016, just like they're trying to they're they're trying to do it here with our government because people are stepping outside the line people are not believing the garbage propaganda from their own governments that are brought to you by the worst of the worst and they just assume that that's automatically Russia because hey we got to build up this war propaganda somehow so there's the CBC meet the right-wing Canadian influencers accused of collaborating with an alleged Russian propaganda scheme yeah This is all an allegation, by the way. This is all allegations. That they just assume that because these are successful podcasters with their own shows and have viewership and people are going to tune to them every single week that, God forbid, they had to be Russian. They they can't just have people with different opinions. They They have to manipulate people's judgment somehow. And they're posing these people as Russian assets. Um, here's this from tenant media on the south says some of the former content creators for tenant media, Ruben was allegedly paid $400,000 a month for a weekly video, along with a hundred thousand dollar signing bonus pool was allegedly also paid 400,000 a month for a weekly video. Now that may seem bad, but consider the fact that one, they're already successful with or without this. So it doesn't even matter at this point. They're 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 hugely popular and hugely successful on their own show. So that doesn't even matter at this point. And also the fact that considering the fact that other broadcasters, how much bank they're getting, how much how much they're pulling in from advertisers, from investors, from overseas donors, is this is minuscule to that think of all the people that are paid by israel 
how much money they get they get from Israel. They get they get money from the millions. This is just pennies to them. This is nothing compared to what APEC lobby firms are paying media companies on an everyday basis. And they're doing it to, in the form of blackmail. They're doing it in the form of uh, bribery so that they could take control of the Middle East. That's why they're perfect allies. They're allies because they we give them money. They give us money. We blackmail each other on our intelligence and they are allowed to do their war crimes and we just turn the other cheek and we defend them. Um, And here's even Laura Chen and this may be why this is so controversial and why her name is appearing all of a sudden in the midst of all this because Lauren Chen, one of her tweets says, APEC is a lobbying organization that represents a foreign nation and funds or targets members of Congress based on their loyalty to said foreign nation. Exactly. So if we actually gave a shit about foreign influence, if we really want to have a conversation about this, this should be the top of the list. This should be the top of the list. But they'll never, ever touch this. They'll never ever touch this because that's how much influence they have over American society. That's how powerful this APEC lobby organization is. It's a multi-billion dollar industry that they have cultivized together to pander to the media, to pander to certain politicians, to pander to politics, to pander to policy, to pander to foreign, uh, foreign affairs, to pander to our culture. And anyone that dare speaks about it is called an anti-Semite. It's called a, a, a bigot. They got kicked off the media. I'm surprised that uh, Velshi from MSNBC was able to say that at one time. At one time, he was able to call the APAC lobby out. And now you don't hear from him anymore. That's how de- deeply powerful they are. Um, here's even Brett Weinstein pointing this out. Anyone else knows that Nina Jankowitz, the disgrace, would be minister of truth. Oh, my God. Yes. I remember. Oh, my God. Yes. Remember remember that? That was that separate Homeland Security Department that they were going to infiltrate a minister of truth, meaning that there was going to be a police force to track down social media posts. There was going to be a police force to arrest people that were posting wrong think online. That's that's who your tax dollars are going towards, folks. That they were going to create a minister of truth. And she was even popped up in this ridiculous story um, from the New York Times. So they published this article saying Russians, Russia secretly warms its way into America's conservative media. Federal prosecutors say Russia paid an American media company to push pro-Kremlin messaging from social media influencers like Benny Johnson, Tim Pool, and Dave Rubin. Nina Jankowitz, a co-founder of the American Sunlight Project. Oh, how joyful. An advocacy group in Washington that fights disinformation online said that this is a classic case of information laundering. I don't even know what that is. I feel like they're making up words. They're making up words to fight disinformation. They're diswording disinformation. Like the Russians and other foreign actors have used it for decades to obscure the source of influence operations. Again, they don't mention Israel. They don't mention Saudi Arabia. So, the, the only other foreign actors they mention are the places that we want to invade. Ironic, huh? She went on, in this case, they choose influencers who are allegedly engaging in ra- a rage bait, explain the pre-existing fix, uh, fissures in our society for clicks. Or maybe they're just pissed off altogether because people like you have undermined the value of society for so long. It can't, it can't be that they're just, they're just doing it for clicks. They're not a grifter, but I, but, but I'm a wholesome person. Jeez. It's like, uh, lamentable 
that these influencers conducted so little due diligence. Miss Jankowitz said when someone uh, when something seems too good to be true, in this case, getting paid one hundred thousand dollars per video for content you're already making, it probably is. Again, so with that logic, then uh, should we be investigating then David Dobrik, uh, the vlog squad, any of those popular Mr. Beast? Any of those popular YouTubers and TikTok influencers, should we not investigate them for how much money they're getting? I mean, you're talking about the same administration that brought in TikTok influencers to undermine people for the election. You brought in teenagers and young adults from social media platforms like TikTok and and YouTube and Twitch, gamers, to propagandize people. This is... I... I... It's, 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 it makes your head spin how much they dig themselves this hole. And all it does is realize what kind of bullshit they will spew out of their mouth when they're doing the exact same thing. Because... While they're complaining about Dave Rubin and Tim Pool and, and Benny Johnson, who are already making a huge amount of money for just doing the work that they're doing, they're already successful with or without the Russian connections, uh, the alleged Russian connections, because they don't even have evidence to back these claims. But yet, people like Jankowitz and the Biden administration had paid TikTok influencers to peddle their conspiracies. And no one bats an eye for that. No one's concerned about that. No one's concerned that the United States uh, White House, the Biden team, along with uh, Department of Homeland Security and the Ministry of Truth, paid a bunch of influencers on social media to propagandize people. And then they want to dismantle TikTok. Because nobody bought the propaganda. They want to shut down TikTok because no one bought their garbage. So this just shows how hypocritical these stupid goddamn people are. And speaking of hypocritical goddamn people, um, I thought this was kind of funny. So uh, Ben Shapiro... Ben Shapiro, you know about Ben Shapiro, Ben the Weasel Shapiro. Um, Had a conversation with Tim Pool about this uh, allegation. And Ben Shapiro scolded Tim Pool, saying, how dare you get involved with uh, this company and Lauren Chen for uh, infiltrating you guys to the Russian ideology and how dare you do this. And, you know, shaming the finger at Tim Pool for doing what he does, knowing that he's bought to you by Russian influence. Not knowing the fact that Ben Shapiro does the exact same thing. Exact same thing. All these goddamn commentators, these political commentators, there's a reason why I'm doing this on a shoestring budget because nobody's bought my ass yet. These people pander to... Big top donors. And Ben Shapiro is no different, except Ben Shapiro panders towards Israel, as you're about to see here. After scolding Tim Pool for the ele- for the alleged crime of pandering towards Russia, according to the mainstream. Listen to this. Frustrating to get entangled in whatever whatever it is she's accused of being. It's, it's frustrating to get entangled in whatever whatever it is she's accused of being involved in. Folks, our friends in Israel need our help now more than ever. If you're looking for a tangible way to support the Holy Land, you need to check out Artsa Box. Artsa brings the essence of Israel right to your doorstep. Every three months, you receive a carefully curated collection of authentic Israeli products, a treasure trove of handcrafted gifts, beautiful artwork, delicious foods, aromatic spices, and more. It's like taking a journey through the land of the Bible without even leaving your home. God, do these people own a mirror? <laughs> do these people own a freaking mirror? <laughs> oh, you had a Tim Pool. The 
talk about Russian influence. And then you go to a commercial saying that Israel needs our help. So buy products and support them. Oh. 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 Wow. Wow. Talk about the pot calling the kettle black. And that's what a lot of these, like, highly, you know, and, and I'm not saying, like, all successful podcasters are all successful YouTubers. I mean, you know, Joe Rogan or um, Theo Vaughn, you know, I don't consider them in this, like, slimy world. But, um, you know, know where these people are coming from. Know who their advertisers are. There's a reason why... Um, they say the things they do. They There's a reason why someone like Ben Shapiro will sway one way, but then say the opposite or uh, do something that's different from what they he's telling you guys on his show. Like, there's a reason for that. He sways to where the money goes. He sways to where uh, the influencer or, or, or the, the, the foreign asset is coming towards him. And because he's getting a lot, lot of kickbacks for Israel uh, through advertising dollars, through uh, APEC lobbying, peddling towards his show. So, yeah, of course, he's going to pander towards why we need to do genocide and back the decimation of Palestinians. Of course. Of course. And you can get 10% off the subscription for it. How great is that? You can get, you know, biblical products for the price of manslaughter across an entire civilization. Only 10% off. Yay. And yet they're grilling Tim Pool and Dave Rubin, who I don't really watch to begin with. I don't really know them. But I can assure you that just, just on the basis of this headline, on the basis of reading through this, it's, this is all a complete joke. It's all a complete joke. It's all a complete slander. Just like how, you know, they said about Joe Rogan, just like how they say about Jimmy Dore, just like how they say about anybody that steps out of the line. Anyone that steps out of the line of the corporate media sphere, anyone that steps out of the line, the official narrative, you're going to get a target on your back. And I guess, I guess the only reason no one's written about me because I'm still in the dark. I'm not as fancy and popular as, as these people. As you can see, you know, I'm doing this on a shoestring budget. Um, and that's why I'm able to just say whatever the hell I want. <laughs>